Hello everyone, this is Shukura Zohe Kuku aka Chukumit and welcome back to our last fight of Aquarium Galas. In the last playthrough, we have managed to reach the empty galas and met with the god there, who is very handsome by the way and very kind. He offered to cure us and we get to be in the aquarium for a month. So hopefully during that month we will be able to learn more about our god and maybe survive. But most importantly, learn more about our god and maybe make friends. <laughs> anyway, let's start. Week one. I must prove to be true to his word. He brought me a mixture of food and medicine before I drifted off. When I woke up later, I was still in his room, still alive. The curse mark continued to ache, but my other symptoms were calmer. I felt well enough to even eat the collection of fruits and vegetables left for me. My hands straight up to my forehead. It no longer burned, but I could feel the faint presence of something sticking there. Not physically, more like I felt it in my soul. I felt slightly chilly as a result. What did he do to me? My curiosity helped get me the strain to get out of bed. Hyman was nowhere to be seen in the main antechamber. The door opposite of the bedroom was ajar. I gently pressed a hand to the door. It swung open. The circular room wrapped around a pillar of ice that rested on a blanket of odd-looking flowers and grass. Bookshelves stood tall on every wall. Hi, Mas. I called out. Come in. Hi, Mas was in the back of the room, hunched over a desk and examining something under a magnifying glass. He didn't look up at me at all as I approached. One moment. I decided to let my eyes wander a bit. The giant pillar of eyes in the library felt so out of place. It should have been making this place freezing cold, but the air remained cozy. I watched as streaks of energy moved through the ice, chasing streaks of black smoke. There. I must put some tools down and turn to look at me. I had pulled my eyes away to meet his gaze. What do you need? What did he do to me? In what sense? I pointed to my forehead. A spell. I gathered that much. What part of it are you curious about? What's going on with my body? You are suspended in time currently to halt the disease. Wait, so I'm not aging? Physically, no. Mentally, yes. You are still aware of time passing. If I didn't do this, the disease would probably spread and cause havoc. But it's just a disease, right? Exactly. Please do not go jumping up our clubs or beheading yourself. <laughs> oh man. You're frozen in time, not invulnerable. There's a difference? A big one. I see. Does this take a lot of energy to maintain? Yes, it does. Mortal beings would rapidly wither if they tried it. But it's nothing to you. No, not nothing. Just not a lot either. You were frozen while still experiencing symptoms. Which means if you don't take your medication, the symptoms will flare up. I nodded in understanding. That's all there is to it. So that's why he was so confident I would be fine. I see. It is my duty to heal the sick. If that is all. I must move to turn back to his work. I have another question. I must turn back around immediately. Yes. Do you know how I got cursed? Off the top of my head, no. Could we figure it out? Yes, there are only so many ways for it to occur. 
First of all, it isn't divine distribution. How do you know that? The shape is wrong. Divine retribution always bears the shape of the god or goddess who gave it to you. Symbol circles belong to devils. I see. What's after that? Deals with devils. You don't seem to be the type, though. I'm not. Not that. Did you buy anything new recently? It could be something very plain. A new brush or a new pair of boots? No, I haven't needed to. Not a cursed object then. All that is left is a grudge. A grudge? Some human souls can taint the living in a way similar to devils after death. This tainting process makes curse marks. Has anyone important to you died recently? Family, lover. I talked about it. Death wasn't an uncommon thing in Andatol in general. Someone close to me, though. No, not that I know of. I amended their statement when my heart twisted at the thought of Edith. That you know of. It wouldn't be related to this. When I was cast out, an older friend of mine tried to defend me. The priest ordered an exorcism. Ah, the papyric rituals of the Southern Church. I must recognize the problem immediately. She's older. Yeah. Would you like me to check on her? I was floored by the offer. You can't leave the mountain. Technically, that's complicated. For a more simple solution. Hyman's gesture up into the rafters where a variety of ravens rested. They can, and I can borrow their eyes. Could you? Hyman nodded. His eyes glowed faintly and some of the birds flew away. Let me focus. Okay. We stood in silence for a while. Hyman's glowing eyes flicked back and forth while watching things I couldn't see. This bribe her to me. I did so, hoping that I was doing a good job. I must let out of this noise. She's alive. My shoulders sagged in relief. I must whine. She's very loud. She always is. The power in his eyes faded, and he looked at me once more. Thank you, I must. It is not a problem and required minimal effort. Even though he said that, I saw him rub his temple. His eyes were slightly bloodshot now. He continued on before I could ask about it. She is obviously not the culprit. I crossed my arms and tried to think. Their mark seems to have developed for about three weeks, if that helps. Immediately, one death sprung to mind. Eric, the Mason son? Why are you looking at me like I can't say yes or no? Right, you wouldn't know him. Did he die around that time? He did. He died in a bar fight about three weeks ago. He took a bad blow to the head, and his brain bled out on the inside. Was he a friend? No, just a neighbor. He had a, a less than pleasant personality. I tried to be polite and avoid him mostly. Avoid him? Does that mean he tried to talk to you? I nodded. He never crossed the line, so I didn't think too much about it. We did get into an argument the day he died, though. He certainly seems to like our culprit. Hmm. If he had a one-sided attraction to you, it could explain the curse being a Blake. No. Obsessive jealousy to make sure no one else would want you after his death. Ooh, that's unpleasant. I let down a disgusted noise. It's quite common for your face curse mark to be placed due to that sentiment. Vile. It is. 
I shuddered and felt my skin crawl. I'm not even interested in relationships. I'm not even attracted to men. I wasn't attracted to him at all. I thought I made it clear too. Some men are too stupid to take a hint, even if you hit them with it. Speaking from experience, of course, I'm not ugly. That's the only real limitation for a man of my status back home. He surprisingly didn't sound smirk. Just a matter of fact. Yeah, you're very pretty. Ooh. I drew on the revelation. All it takes is one asshole to ruin your life, and he doesn't even have to be alive to do it. How does that even happen? Do you really want to know? No, kind of. Yes, I do. Death is too proud. I gave him a confused look. He explained further. He refused to create helpers to make it easier to get his souls. Many human souls are able to linger on the spram, unseen but still problematic, since their soul can tempt others around it. So this is. I dropped my voice to a whisper. The God of Death's fault. I waited for some kind of divine boat to find me. None came. Hima surprised me by laughing. He had a surprisingly soft laugh. I assure you, he can't reach you here. <laughs> Call him whatever you like. Curse his name, even. He holds no power here. But yes, it is partially his fault. Of course, the other part lies in the wicked heart of the human who left the curse. It is true that he only had the chance due to this arrogance, though. That is a horrifying thought. Queen's flapping interrupted our conversation. I must watch a raven landed. There was sitting a small scroll case on his desk. He scowled darkly at it. Bad news? No, an annoying sender. I hate to say this, but I do need to deal with that. Is it urgent? More so in the sense that the sender is impatient and prone to dangerous pranks. I must gesture for me to follow him. He walked me to the door of the library. Please stay out of the library until I exit it again. I don't know what is in that case, and I'd rather you not find out. Is the sender that bad? Worse. I'm assigned. Apologies for our conversation being interrupted. We can continue later if you wish. All right, thank you, Hymas. He gave me a polite partial bow of acknowledgement before shutting the library door. I felt better in having some answers about what was going on. There was no way I could tell Derek what his son would have done to me from the grave. It would absolutely shatter him. And he was already broken after losing Eric. I felt horrible knowing that Eric was even worse than Derek knew. He already knew his son was unpopular, but this was on a different level. I had to make sure no one found out about this, for Derek's sake, at least. I sat down on the fur bench and sighed. There were many things I needed to think about regarding home. At least now I would have the time to do it. The aquarium had more space inside it than I imagined. A network of dark hallways crawled through the mountain. I was free to go to many places, but there were a few that I must forbid me from entering. I didn't mind the limitations. There was a small garden to enjoy, full of fruits and vegetables. The bathroom room mercifully had hot water. One thing I noticed quickly was that there wasn't much to do. Hymas had himself buried behind a wall of books at any point in time. For me, there was no immediate equivalent. I tried to find things to do. I couldn't just spend the next few weeks bored out of my mind. Eventually, Hymas noticed my recklessness. 
is something wrong? He shouted concerned. No, no, nothing's wrong. Just restless. Uh, there isn't much to do here, is there? Paimon stretched at his cheek with a single claw. I don't often entertain guests. I assumed. I mean, the legends speak for themselves. Paimon nodded. What do you do back home? Mostly, worked. I was the only baker in town. It's hard to not be working for a change. Would bacon make you feel more comfortable? It'll be something to do. There is an oven here. I could feel my eyes lit up. That's a feel, right? There is? Come with me. I must let me to the tasty that hit the kitchen from the main end chamber. The kitchen was a tight, crowded space for Hymas alone. With two of us in here, we were practically touching. Hymas pushed aside some beds dangling and revealed another tiny room. It had an oven tucked into a wall. I don't use it often, but you can feel free to. Really? Sure. It's not like you can burn this place down after all. Okay? <laughs> okay, do you mean like literally can't burn this place down or uh, um, or is it like famous last word or do you trust in our ability to not burn this place down? Thank you, Hymas. It's not a problem. Perhaps we can include whatever you make a part of our meals. Hymas paused. On that note, would you refer to eat together? I'm a busy individual, but I do still eat. Perhaps talking over meals would have passed the time. He sounded awkward while offering, like he never had to think about this before. It didn't sound like he hated the idea though. Oh, that would be nice. Ooh. I wouldn't like to. I would like to. That would be nice. It would definitely help pass the time. Very well then. Ooh, why are you blushing, sir? Are you feeling shy? Ooh. <laughs> I must start it in an obvious attempt to not look flustered. Yep, yeah, he's being shy. <laughs> I'm not the best at remembering to eat. You might need to remind me when I need to cook. I can do that. Good. I must took the time to show me where a few important things were in the kitchen. He then disappeared to continue his work. Nice. Even with my new forms of entertainment, my thoughts strayed to home often. The first few times, I got teary. After that, my mood just became heavy. It was depressing to realize how little they made me feel. I also worried for those who stood up for me. I could only hope that O'Clair didn't stop at Chester Esosom's. I shook my head and got up from where I was sketching to pass the time. My body needed to move, so I stepped out of the bedroom. To my surprise, Hymus wasn't in his library. He sat on the ground in front of the fire, watching it with heavy lidded eyes. His hands were idly nicking something. A few of the ravens had gathered on his lap. Blue eyes lazily strolled over to me when the door shut behind me. What? You knit? Oh, can I see it? Okay, I, I can't see that. You don't? He didn't sound accusatory, merely curious. Uh, no. Not really. I did knit most of my things. Interesting. Newton and Sowen were required skills for everyone in Motherwell. He turned his attention back to his work. I wasn't sure if I necessarily wanted to talk about Newton. I was sure that I didn't want to think about home, and Haimo seemed open to talking. I walked over and sat down on the bench, keeping some space between us. Haimo didn't react to my presence. Why was it required? We had to learn a lot of basic skills in case we get separated from the caravan. The Moria really travel by constant caravan? 
Many scholars argue over that. Some thought it was impossible for people to constantly keep on the move in a new tundra. Others thought that claiming otherwise contradicted our evidence. It was necessary. We had to follow our food in more ways than one. Oh, Earth elementals would make pockets up on frozen land. We would gather around these pockets for a season or two to grow crops. Then it would be used up, and we'll need to find the next one. It was a hard life, but it was ours. I'm a science. I even made sure to reduce the freeze to make gardens more common. Excuse me? I blinked at him. What? You can't casually mention affecting the weather in an entire region like that. It's simple enough to do if you have the power. The human in me wanted to hit him for making it sound so simple. I decided to focus on clarifying things to avoid smacking the back of his head. <laughs> okay, that's an interesting reaction. <laughs> Yowa and the talk can form now. The Emperor saw the change in weather as proof of the divine favoring his ascension. Well, that is a disgusting thought. It was certainly not the gods who did it. It was me. I wanted to make the loss easier. A vile, cretin brat. His knit and needles moved faster with his annoyance. Are you referring to the first emperor as a brat? He was a young upstart, a folk legend, and hero to those in the empire. A sniveling, arrogant brat, yes. I had the displeasure of meeting him once. I should have caught him. I'm assigned. Things are always clearer in hindsight. They are. I am glad that you didn't kill the first emperor, though. I mean, uh, would I even exist if you had? Fair point. I was surprised he considered that. What emperor is your empire on now? The tenth, mostly because the first and eight emperors died young. It's always strange to hear about the passage of time. It must feel like an eternity. It doesn't, which is why it feels weird. It doesn't. I already felt like a small century had passed, despite only being a few days. I am not aware of time passing unless a human is in proximity, due to the fact time herself inertia me. Could you expand on that a bit more? He had a bad habit of skipping over relevant information. The goddess of time removed me from her awareness. Her awareness is why you know how many minutes have passed and how soon it is until your next task. She doesn't cause us to age physically. That is her husband's death. His awareness causes the human body to decay. Together, they cause age and injury. Perfect immortality is when both of them are unaware of you. Like you. I must nod it. Like me. For me, only two years have passed due to the number of guests I have had. During your stay here, I will be aware of the month passing by. When you leave, I will be none the wiser once more. He spoke about it so casually, so calmly, that I almost didn't process the extra layer of tragedy. To Hymas, he had only been away from his people for two years. My sympathy died quickly. That's horrible. I'm sorry. Hymas gave me a faint, sad smile. It's a mercy, in a way. The mortal mind cannot withstand eternity. We break. We break eventually. Not being aware of time is why I'm still sane. That only helps so much. I mean, damn. If I found out my people were dead after only two years passing, I shook my head. How are you so calm? My profession required perfect emotional control at all times. 
I feel the pain deeply, but there is always work to be done. That's the sad way to live. It is. I must shout. A heavy pause lingered in the air. I doubt you came out to talk about my woes. What brought you out here? I fought the urge to sigh as he deflected the focus back onto me. Home. Home. I can't stop thinking about it. It's a common drain of thought. It's depressing to think about. I must hand stop moving. I had his full attention. I'm sorry. I let down a surprised chuckle at that. What are you apologizing for? It's not like you left me in the snow. A fable saved me when my own people didn't. It was a laughable display, really. That doesn't mean that I can't be sympathetic. I doubt you expected this to happen. I didn't. I never thought about cursed merch. They just seemed to not be a problem I needed to worry about. Every other time I've been sick, they've been there. Any time I needed them, they had my back. But this time, when I arguably needed them the most, I couldn't even finish the thought as ice cold misery sank into me. I must shifted from where he was sitting. He reached out his human hand and batted my knee. It's a right to be upset about it. It's a devastating thing, Idrio. That's what it is, isn't it? I felt my eyes burn. Yes. Damn it! I rub at them. It's a right to cry. Well, that did it. I must wait patiently for me to finish babbling and sniffling. He didn't seem judgmental at all. His normal stoic expression softened with pity. I wrangled my emotions in at some point. Once my stipples faded, I must handed me a handkerchief. Better? Not really. I must give me a sad smile. Yes, it does take a bit longer, doesn't it? Take the time you need. I nodded. After that. I must and I idly chatted for a bit longer. We mostly talk about Andatol versus Motherwell, comparing and contrasting our lives. I must was a walking, talking history book, and I made sure to ask some important questions. I must surprised me by asking me about the history he had missed. Our casual conversation turned into a history lecture of sorts. I didn't have time to grow bored though. I must had to leave to tend to something. Frankly, it was surprising to see him not working for as long as I had. I must might not have been the most comforting person, but he had tried. It was nice to know that he could feel empathy to some degree. It helped me settle a bit more comfortably into my temporary stay. The atmosphere of the aquarium was very warm. Hymus could be a bit awkward at times, but his earnest demeanor make it endearing. Ah, why he is? Why is he blushing again? He would try to talk to me whenever he wasn't busy. He also kept an open door policy, meaning I could pester him freely. Our meals vary in length and topic. Sometimes we would get into hidden discussions about history. Other times. We would talk about funny stories from our childhood. Seeing how he must become memories like any other person really humanized him to me. He seemed curious about me as well, which helped conversation flow naturally. The only consistent thing in the aquarium was my medication dosage. I must was very careful to make sure each dose arrived on time. If that curse does what I think it does, you absolutely cannot miss a dose. What do you think it does? Rampant fever, constant nausea, muscle spasms, migraine, and probably hallucinations. On the gentler end of things, I stare at him. And the worst end? I don't think you want to breathe with how much pain you'll be in. Honestly. 
even though it's a plague curse by technicality, I'll call it a suicide curse. Is that malicious? I shuddered. I must reach down and bat at my shoulder. Don't worry, nothing will happen to you. I am keeping a close eye on your condition at all times. I'm glad to hear it. You'll tell me if something weird happens, right? Of course. You should tell me if something odd begins happening from your angle as well. Absolutely. I'm glad we understand each other. Now, what is a flavor you enjoy? Perhaps I can make the medicine less bitter. I must turn his attention back to the task at hand. I felt myself smiling despite it all. I never would thought I'd find this aquarium comfortable. It felt all too natural to join Hamasai in the kitchen to continue the conversation. I was tending to my boots when Hamas knocked on the door. Do you have a moment? Yes, come in. Hamas strolled into the room calmly. He had a satchel hanging off at one shoulder and a stab of grey wood and ice in his opposite hand. I need to tend to a few things on the mountainside. Would you like to come with me? It might be a nice break from being stuck inside. I would love to. I hopped up immediately. I was going mildly stir-crazy. As terrifying as empty gallows could be, being outside might help. Give me just a moment to get ready. There is no rush. I move quickly all the same. I must step outside of his home with no shoes on. Isn't that cold? I don't feel the cold anymore. In his sight, the fact that parts of his body were obviously force-fitten should have made that obvious. Still, isn't it bad for your feet? I will be fine. My body refers to cold anyways. Then why is your home warm? Because my mind refers it warm. There is a difference between your body and your mind? Of course there is. Nostalgia. I must walk with his back straight. I must keep perfect pace with my stride despite the height difference. I could tell it took some conscious effort on his part to match my pace. What do you need to do? It had to be important if it managed to pull him away from his library. Do things. I must gesture to the trees around us. I need to check on some of these. He pointed up the mountain to where the ring of dark, angry clowns continued to gather. I need to deal with that. He spoke about it like it was his neighbor's annoying dog. That's not your creation? He looked offended at the motion. No. That is a lot of devils trying to make the gate bigger. Why would they need to make the gate bigger? Can't they already get through? That's the devils, yes. The big ones, no. The gate is too small for them to cross. So, uh, they try and do that in their, uh, leaders? I must not it. Which would be catastrophic. I maintain a show to try and keep them content here. Obviously, the stronger ones can still force their way through when I'm not looking. If they extend the gate, more powerful ones would flood out. I would have to spend each day reinforcing this show and virgin devils. He crumbled at the very idea. I have better things to do than fight a never-ending war. So, I strive to keep the gate as small as possible. I stared at him. What? Shouldn't uh, the gods be in doing this? I must promise. This is not their fault. It's mine, so I need to take responsibility for it. I see. I imagine if the gate ever did a stand, they would intervene. For now, preventative measures are obviously referred. So, our yearly blizzards aren't just because you're cranky. The command slipped out before I could stop it. I must stop walking and turn to look at me. Excuse me? 
Well, um, we call that. I pointed up at the glass. Hyman's breath. We thought it was you upset with us. What? Why? Mortals are dumb. It's not our fault. We don't know what's going on here. You aren't exactly famous for being welcoming. I am very welcoming when people follow the customs correctly. I must continue working. Customs, the custom of the responsible host. It is from Motherwell. How do you not know this? You did it. I thought about it for a moment. The offering. Yes. That's just what the legend said. We need to do to not get struck by lightning after setting foot on empty gallows. That is the customary written of a guest in my culture. Now some fairy tale. In Motherwell, those in need of hospitality offer up something of importance to them. It can be coin, but usually it's things like family heirlooms. It is meant to be an extension of fate. I won't harm you and yours because you hold this piece of me now. So that's why my bracelet works, even though it's just wood. Yes, the sentimentality is what is important. I must tuck her hand into his robe and pull out that very bracelet. When you go to leave, I will return it to you. I was relieved to hear that. He tucked the bracelet away once more. Is that why you helped me? I follow an old custom. Yes. That's it. I also swore an oath to tend to the sick and injured. Both my oath and the custom are traditions before the gods. I must stop talking for a moment. The gods mean nothing to me, but the oaths and these emotions behind them do. He looked at me out of the corner of his eye. I do not break my word if I can avoid it. When I accepted your offering, that was an oath. Thus, I will see this through. Thank you. It is my duty. I must spoke those words again. At first, I thought those were empty words to calm a panicked human. Now, I saw that they were renewals of an oath. Maybe you aren't a monster. You're kinder than people give you credit for. I must let out a string of noise of confusion. Borden. His cheeks were faintly pink. Ooh, I love that. <laughs> you know, most people think you're some greedy, cold-hearted monster up here. His blush faded into an eyebrow. Thank you so much. You aren't though. You're surprisingly kind. Surprisingly. Well, I mean, most stories about you aren't favorable, because you are an affront to the judge. He looked oddly smug about that last comment. That is true. Despite what they say, I was a mortal first. I can see that now. Should I be offended? I was worried for a moment until I realized he was teasing me. Okay, okay. You are an ass sometimes. Okay. <laughs> It is amusing to watch the panic. See this? Only sometimes. <laughs> That's cute, huh? I squatted his arm out of habit. It was a common gesture back home. Real fear pushed through me when I realized what I had done. I worried it was a step too far. It broke when he just laughed at the display. I realized immediately. Smiling and a little pink faced, Hyman spoke again softly. Thank you. I wonder how long it had been since someone called him kind. Not a problem. Hymus and I continued to talk after that during the walk. The conversation wove around different things, but it was warm and engaging. I must move around the garden with purpose. Periodically, he would pause to examine one of the black trees. 
He never stepped too close while taking his notes. He also drew some vials from his satchel and tossed them at the trees. They shattered, and a liquid poured onto them. The tree writhed and shrieked at that. Another failure. I am assigned. Each time the vials didn't do what they were supposed to, his face darkened. I'm sorry. I must look up from his journal to raise a brow at me. That it isn't going well. You look disappointed. I must tap his quill on the page of his journal for a moment or two. I am. I should be used to it by now. He signed. Do not worry about me. He closed the book. But thank you. Eventually, our long walk took us to a break in the trees. A few of perfect snow rested before us. Wait by the tree line. The magic will be intense if you are too close. I must have the satchel with his journal down beside me. Keep an eye on this. Don't open it. Sure. I must walk away from me. I kept an eye on the bag. I must stepped out into the field of snow and began to trace something into the ground with his staff. He stepped carefully while carving out a runic circle, methodically and precisely. I watched in awe as blue light emerged from the ground. The energy drifted upwards and began to spin a web. It was like watching layers of glassy energy form a shell. Then, a smaller one would form in the next layer inwards. In the end, I must stood in the center of at least ten different webs of magic. I could practically taste it, like alcohol and cinnamon and something otherworldly rested on my tongue. I must struck the ground with his staff. The vibration it sent out sent me falling to my knees. I felt it echo within my body, and I shook under its intensity. I looked up from the snow to watch as he began to draw symbols in the air with his hands. Power swirled through the mountain, and for the first time, the winds made noise. It almost felt like a void had been opened up in the field, calling all matter of life to flow inwards. With a thunderous clap, the energy shattered. The shells around him stretched forward and away from him. I watched it raise up the mountainside faster than my mind could follow. Finally, my mind recognized the shapes. It was like a small army of men and women made of wind and snow. The second the army collided with the ring of dark energy, a roar of defiance could be heard. The life force was way inside, and a battle of wheels occurred then. I must have both hands forward. I couldn't make out his expression due to the snow surrounding him. For ten painfully slow heartbeats, the battle raged on. The sound of clouds shattering forced me to cover my ears. I watched as the clouds turned gray and began to roll down the mountain. I must spread would now fall across Andatol. I never thought I'd see a natural phenomenon be born in front of me. My life really had taken a turn for the strange. Hymo's shoulders were slumped when he walked towards me. He actually looked a bit winded. We are done. His voice had a slight wheeze to it. Do you need to take a moment? No, we should hurry back. Your medicine should be done brewing. He wrapped his bag and slung it over his shoulder. This time, he leaned on his staff while walking. He didn't have the energy to talk on the way back, so I held back my questions. We just barely managed to reach the aquarium before the blizzard hit. I need to settle down. I must still look fatigued. It was surprising. I never thought I'd see you look tired. He gave me a weak glare. I just fought up over three thousand devils. I am allowed to be fatigued. My eyes widened at the number. That many. That many. Any doubt I had in his power faded then. I am going to rest. Please refrain from too much noise. He drifted off to his library. I felt tired after the walk myself. Despite how much care, I was still technically sick. 
might not turn into me falling asleep completely. And that should be a good pause in our playthrough today. So today we started the first week at this aquarium and we chat a lot with Hymos, which is really nice actually. Despite the stoic expression on his face and the way he talk and um, the slight awkwardness, it was pretty nice. He is willing to talk and answer any questions that we had. And we actually found some common topics to talk about like histories, the change in history. And we learned of the tragedy befallen him, kind of tragedy. The curse of immortality, but also not a curse at all. We also know about what he does, so defeated the devils and make sure no the the gate of the devils isn't widened more to cause trouble to the um, the world. So that's really cool. Now he is tired and needed to rest and we also needed to rest. So that should be it for our playthrough of Aquarium Galas. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next playthrough of the game. Bye bye!